So it's coming up to the end of summer, which means some of you are going back to college into your fourth year of your computer science degree. And you're thinking about all these software engineering interviews that you're actually gonna have to do soon. Or maybe you're self-taught and you're thinking, finally, it's time to actually start interviewing. Now, the last two years, I've actually been interviewing a lot of people. I've sat on the panel for Associate Backend Engineer New Grads for a lot of interviews. So I've seen some things and I've seen some patterns across those years about the do's and the don'ts of software engineering interviews. And here, I thought I'd share those tips with you just to make sure that you're a little bit more confident when you're going into those interviews. Now, the first thing is obviously it's important to work on the technical side. You know, you have to usually go through elite code or a hacker rank style problem to get into the next stages here. However, just because you don't do 100% perfectly on that problem does not mean you're out of the running. For new grad software engineering interviews, what we really wanna focus on is making sure that that person is excited to learn. I've seen a lot of people actually drop out of the whole software engineering interview process because they only got a 70% on the Leco problem. That is good enough. You should actually continue through the process. So the way my interview is structured, the way I actually do this as part of the panel is we give you that hacker rank problem or lead code problem, you do it, you get a score, but then you meet with me for 30 minutes and we actually talk through the problem and your solution. So here, I'm not looking for perfect answers ever. I'm not looking for you to know every single aspect of the problem because these problems are designed to be maybe a little difficult, you know, you'd really have to think through it. So what I really wanna know there is how you actually think. So what I want you to tell me through this process is how you approach the problem, what kind of various solutions did you look at? Because I wanna know what your thought process was while you were looking at this problem. And this kind of guides me into asking you certain questions about pieces of your code. And as we go through the solution, sometimes I'll ask you, what would you have done better if you had taken a step back? You know, sometimes code comes to us in a dream. If you'd taken that step back and actually looked at the problem again, how would you have redone this problem? And to me, it's always very interesting when a candidate has actually taken that time afterwards to think of, maybe I could have done this better, or, you know, they commented the code really well when they were doing this problem and actually looked back at it and said, oh yeah, I remember I got kind of caught up in this portion of it, and this is why, this is how I was thinking and through the process they're asking me questions as well and that's a really good sign. I talk about this a lot in my other videos but one of the worst thing you can do when you're in a new job is not ask questions. So remember as an interviewer I also want you to do well because I want to hire you in the end I want to have good people join the team so that also means I get to do less interviews if we hire more people faster so I'm actually rooting for you through this whole process. I see some of these new software grads actually being really afraid to ask questions because they think I'll think that they're stupid or something and that's not the case. There's no way you can come in knowing every single aspect of software engineering. And especially when you start on the job, there's gonna be a lot of things you don't know. And those things are not just computer science things or coding things. You're not gonna know about the code base or you're not gonna know about certain stylistic choices. I wanna make sure that you're always comfortable asking questions and that's a big green flag for me. Another tip, and this may seem obvious, but be prepared and be on time. Of course, these software engineering interviews are short and we have a tight schedule because you're probably talking to a bunch of people, but being prepared also means that you have your preferred text editor or uh, Visual Studio Code or Goland or whatever installed on your computer. If you don't know what to expect from an interview and you don't feel like you're prepared, that's what the recruiter is for. You can reach out to them and go, hey, you know, I did this hacker rank problem and now I have a review. What does that mean? What should I be prepared for? And they'll help you and say, you know, we're gonna go through your code. Uh, maybe you will need to grab a text editor and do some live coding. It might just be a discussion, but make sure you're prepared for that. And obviously in this day and age, you know, technical issues do happen. Sometimes life happens, but if you're having a problem, make sure to let the interviewer know ahead of time you know your internet might be bad here's a phone number to call so we can continue the interview if you know the the internet completely goes out or zoom doesn't work you know make sure to have a backup plan that really helps us on our end to make sure that we're continuing and getting you through the process one of the best interviews i had was someone who did not do perfectly on the technical interview but that person went back and actually after the interview kind of thought more about the problem and when they came back to the interview 
they actually came to me and said, hey, you know, I approached it this way, but when I actually went home and thought about the problem more, I realized I had a little bit of a different approach. Maybe we could go through that. So we were able to compare their old code and their new code and talk a little bit about why the complexity, you know, was better on that code piece and why, why certain things were cleaner on that code. And, and that helped me a lot. I realized that the person was very prepared, very ambitious and forward thinking and had actually done some additional research which is very interesting to me and that helped me see that this person would be a really good fit. On that note, don't apologize so much if you're not perfect or you're asking a lot of questions. You don't have to do that. It's not your fault if your internet goes out or something happens, you know, hop back on. You don't have to apologize for not knowing every single thing. Again, I want to see your thought process so take me through this. You don't know the complexity of this off the top of your head? tell me, okay, go through, okay, well, this piece is n, and then there's another loop inside of that, so n squared, and maybe this piece, you know, talk to me about that process. This is what I'm looking for. Another tip is to not get too hung up on certain languages and technologies. So a question I like to ask sometimes is actually, why did you choose to code in this language, you know, in Python versus Java or something like that? Those are two languages I encounter pretty often. And me as an interviewer, I may not have experience in the language that you wrote. And so I wanna hear a little bit about your thought process towards it. And it can be as simple as, this is something that I'm most familiar with or, you know, maybe I'm less familiar with Python, but because it's such quick prototyping kind of language and it's a time test, I thought it would be better. A good candidate kind of knows how their tools work, but is not stuck on that language. A bad answer to that question would be something like, well, I think Python is the best language ever and I'm gonna use it for everything. And if we're a company that uses Golang, for example, that's probably not gonna fly for us, you know, because languages are good at certain things and maybe not the best choice for others. You could technically write a mobile app in Golang, I guess, but it's probably not the best tool for the job. And again, if a certain tool or language helped you or hurt you through the interview, actually mentioned that, that's always very interesting to me. There's one part where we're actually talking about a performance of a certain piece of this code, and they mentioned an aspect of Python that was way slower than Java and went, well, I started with prototyping with Python because I thought it'd be faster to prototype, but here's this nuance of the Python language that actually slowed me down a little bit and I got stuck. And that to me showed a lot of very good insight and a lot of knowledge and self-awareness. On that end, another tip is don't be condescending to the interviewer. And yes, you'd be surprised how often that happens. Now, HackerRank and LeetCode and all these websites actually let you choose what programming language to write in. And the interviewer may not always have a background in that language. So for example, I actually have never coded with Java, but very often I get candidates actually writing in Java. And that's totally okay. You know, a lot of the commonalities between languages are simple enough that, you know, obviously I know the differences between if in Python and Java, but there are nuances that I might not know about. And again, sometimes when I'm interviewing, I'm also asking questions questions that I know the answer to, but I'm seeing how much of that you know and how much you can explain back to me and how clearly you can explain those concepts. But I have asked things in the past and people have told me, obviously this, or been very condescending throughout the process. And again, you know, I'm not a Java expert and I love to learn something from you in the interview, but you know, we're, we all want to make sure that we can work together over the end. And someone being condescending to someone in a company is just not gonna make that a very good environment. So making sure that you're not too stuck on these tools or languages or the differences between knowledge is really important. And one final tip I have here is I'm always really bummed when the person I'm interviewing has no questions at the end. I kind of feel like at that point, maybe the person doesn't really wanna join the company or is not that interested. And maybe you aren't interested and that's fine. You don't want to ask me any questions. You realize that you don't want to join this company. That's totally okay. But if you do, this is the opportunity for you to interview us. Remember, we're not just the only ones interviewing you. You have to feel comfortable and you have to like the job and we kind of want to sell you on it too. But if you're not asking me the questions, how can I sell the company to you? How can I tell what your values are, what you find important? Some people, of course, use that time to talk about a few things on their resume that might seem important and maybe something that I missed throughout the interview process that you think would actually set you above the candidates and that's totally fine. But also remember that is your time and your time to figure out if you'd be a fit in this company. 
And honestly, some good questions to ask if you don't know what to ask is, how does your day-to-day -day look like? How many meetings do you have? What percentage of your time do you spend coding versus doing other tasks? And what are those other tasks? What's life outside of work like? And are you friends with your coworkers? And do you all hang out? Those are always very valid questions. Asking how the teams are structured is another good question, very important. And again, asking what the values of the company are. You can talk about that. What keeps me at the company? What do I love about it so much? And what's the worst thing about the company? Because that's also a really interesting question. And sometimes you get a lot more knowledge from the negative things than you do from the positives. And these days, of course, it's also a good question to ask, what support do you have for work from home or remote employees? You know, how does that factor into your plan? But honestly, there is just important to ask questions. And remember, you're interviewing us as well. And we want you to join, so we want you to be happy. So make sure to ask the questions for the things that are most important to you. So I hope this video helped you a little bit on these tips that I've picked up over many years of interviewing new grads and gives you a little more confidence. Now, remember, we want you to do well as well in these interviews, so it's okay to be nervous and hopefully the person that's interviewing you will put you at ease. For anyone that's watching this video that may be the interviewer at some point, I always start my my interviews and talk to the people about how I was a self-taught engineer and how I transferred and how much support I got and to, you know, not be nervous. And I preface the whole interview saying, hey, I'm not here to judge your code. I'm here to see how you think. And I think that calms people down a little bit, you know, hearing a little bit about me before I jump straight into the interview. And remember, failing one interview is not the end of the world. Of course, you may have your dream job, your dream company, but you'll have another opportunity one day to interview and you'll have learned a lot in the process. And honestly, I've joined some companies that I didn't think would be too great and I had the most best experience of my life. So never judge a book by its cover. It's obviously really tough. You know, both of us are judging each other in just 30 minutes of interviews. You, if you want to work at the company I'm at and me seeing how you'd fit into the company, but you know, all we can do is our best. Just stay cool, stay confident and reward yourself for a good job well done. Even if you feel like you didn't do maybe your best, keep studying, keep working. At some point you will get that dream job.